Woohoo! Welcome back. Today we're going to be working with determinants again, but we're going to use a couple of shortcuts to hopefully help you figure out the best way to evaluate a determinant. Woohoo! Neil will be here to help us out. Yay! Okay, so if you were watching the last video, we're going to find the determinant of that same matrix, but this time we're going to use the third column instead. So what the heck does that mean? Well, if I want to find the determinant of A, which is written as A inside what looks to be absolute value, but is not, it's the determinant because A is a matrix, we're going to expand, whoops, all the colors want to help out today. We're going to use the third column because we can. Why not? right? So I'm going to use this column to evaluate the determinant. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that I'm going to go ahead and multiply A, this is 1, 3, times the cofactor, 1, 3, plus A, 2, 3 times the cofactor, 2, 3, plus A, 3, 3 times the cofactor, A, 3, 3. So what is this going to be? Well, A, 1, 3 is the entry negative 1. And we're going to multiply it times negative 1, because this is the cofactor, to the 1 plus 3 times the minor at 1, 3, plus... 4 times negative 1 to the 2 plus 3 times the minor at 2, 3 plus 6 times negative 1 to the 3 plus 3 times the minor at 3, 3. So we should figure out what these minors are. Now, if we were to look back, I bet we would see that we may have already calculated one of these. For the purposes of practicing, I'm going to go ahead and do them all again, just so you get a you get a good refresher in case it's been a while since you last saw the last video. But if you've already calculated one of these minors, you don't have to calculate it again. Okay, so the minor at one three or the minor of element one three looks like this. Remember, what we do is we write the whole for the whole matrix. And then if we can find it, let's see, I've got the blue one. Oh, forgot the other side. There we go. So the blue one, I'm going to get rid of the first row. And with my yellow, if I can find it, there you are. I'm going to get rid of the third column. And so now I'm going to get the determinant of 0, 2, negative 2, 5. And I noticed something that's nice about this. There's a 0. So that means that one of these values is going to cancel out. Right? I've got a 0, and then I've got a plus 4. So that's equal to 4. Woohoo! Okay, the minor at 2, 3, again, to make it easier, although some people can do this in their head, which is awesome. We want to get rid of the row and the column that are involved with this value, right? So that's the four that's sitting right here. So we get rid of the row that that four is in, and we also get rid of the column that it's in as well. And so I'm going to get the determinant of 2, 3, negative 2, 5, which is going to be 2 times 5 minus 3 times negative 2. So that's going to be 10 plus 6, which is 16. Okay. And then let me scooch up a little bit so I've got a little bit more room. I want the minor at 33. 
So 2, 3, negative 1, 0, 2, 4, negative 2, 5, 6. So at 3, 3, I'm in the bottom row and the third column. So I'm going to be looking for the determinant of 2, 3, 0, 2. And again, there's a nice 0 in there, so I'll get 2 times 2 minus 3 times 0, which is just going to be 4 minus 0. So I really like zeros. That's something to notice in the future. Zeros in a matrix really make some of the arithmetic a lot easier. So let's keep that in mind. So now I'm going to go ahead and complete the determinant. The determinant of A is going to be negative 1 times negative 1 to the fourth times, um, maybe I'll write it again just because this way I'll be able to get all of the information in. So the minor at 1, 3 is 4. Then I've got 4 times negative 1 to the fifth times the minor at 2, 3. And then I've got 6 times negative 1 to the sixth times the minor at 3, 3. So that's going to give me then 4. Um, let's see, this is, this is just going to be negative 1, right? And the minor at 2, 3 is 16, plus 6 times 1 times 4. So let's see, all together, that's negative 1 times 1 times 4, plus, this is going to be negative 64, this is plus 24. I forgot to calculate this right off the bat, so this is negative 4 minus 64 plus 24. That's going to be a negative 44. And if you check back to the last video, you'll find out that that's the determinant. Woohoo! So what did we learn? Well, we learned that you can pick any row or column to evaluate a determinant. So instead of using the first row, which is what we did in the last video, we used the last column. And we got the same value. And this is interesting because when I look at this, I see, hmm, how could I make a good use of that zero? Okay, so let's try something else. You ready, Neo? Awesome. Dun, dun, dun. Now we're going to use the second row. So let me write out the matrix. And you can use any row or any column. Why would the second row be an interesting row to use? Well, the second row is going to involve the zero really significantly, right? Because this is, I'm going to evaluate along that middle row. Okay, so then I'm going to get a two, or sorry, a two one times the cofactor two one plus a two two times the cofactor of two two plus a two, three, times the cofactor of two, three. So these all have to match. As I go through, I'm going to see that A, two, one is zero. A, two, two is two. And A, two, three is four. Something I also notice is I have already calculated, here I've got two, A21, A22, A23, I already know A23. I already have that calculated. So I'm going to be able to use this work for that. Also, why is this really convenient? What is zero times a number? Zero. So we don't have to worry about A21 at all. 
So a22 is going to be negative 1 to the 2 plus 2 times the minor at 2, 2. And 4 times a23, which is negative 1 to the 2 plus 3 times the minor at 2, 3. So, and again, when I just did my work, I just did the minor at 2, 3. I'm not going to do it again. The minor at 2, 3 is 16. So I've got 0 plus 2 times negative 1 to the 4th times whatever the minor at 2, 2 is plus 4 times negative 1 to the 5th times 16. So I already, I already have this one calculated. So that's going to save me some time. So the only thing I need to calculate is the minor at 2, 2. So let's take a look. 2, 3, negative 1, 0, 2, 4, negative 2, 5, 6. So 2, 2 means second row, second column. Woohoo! And so I'm going to be looking at the determinant 2, negative 1, negative 2, 6. Okay, so that's 2 times 6 minus negative 1 times negative 2. So that's going to be 12 minus 2, which is 10. Okay, so let's see. We should get the same value. So the determinant... Ooh, I didn't write that up here. Sorry about that. The determinant of A, there we go, is equal to... 0 plus 2 times 1 times the minor at 2, 2, 2, and then plus 4 times negative 1 times 16, and the minor at 2, 2 is 10. So we've got 0 plus 2 times 10 minus 4 times 16. So that's going to be 20 minus 64 is negative 44. And I notice, dun, 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 I get the same answer. So why was this nice? This was nice because since I capitalized on this zero, I ended up not having to worry about this first cofactor at all. Now, this would work if I used the second row or if I used the first column. I could also get a zero involved there. So as long as I'm using a row or a column that involves a zero, I save myself some time. Also, if for some reason I'm duplicating my effort, if I knew that I had already calculated a 1, 3, a 2, 3, and a 3, 3, right, these, I would be looking for a way to come up with another method that would use one of these values, which I did. So I didn't have to duplicate my effort there. So there's some serious time saving you can do here. And then there's one more thing we can do. Woohoo! So what else can we do? And this one's a big one. It's a little bit weird. When calculating the determinant, here's the weird one. You are allowed to perform row operations or column operations on a matrix before calculating a determinant which means that if you can find a way to create some zeros before calculating the determinant, it's worth it. So now you're going to look at this matrix and go, oh my goodness, this is shameless what you've done. And the answer is yes, it really is. However, I wanted to make a point so that it would be nice to remember this. So this is a different, this is a different matrix than we were just working with. But what happens if I take and I'm going to call this row one, row two, row three, just like we've been doing. What if I take row one plus row three and put it back in row three? What do I get? Well, I have negative one, negative two, and six in the third row. So when I add them, I get zero, zero, ten. Okay, 
So that means that my new matrix A is 1, 2, 4, 0, 2, 4, 0, 0, 10. That's my new matrix. Well, you know what? I'm going to call this A1 because it's not, this is not, so I have performed row operations, so it's a slightly different matrix. I'll call it A sub 1 because it's a new version of A, which I got to using row operations. And so if I then say, you know what? I want to expand along the third row right there. So then I'm going to get um, A sub 1 is going to be um, the determinant of A will be the determinant of this new um, this new matrix. And that's going to be A31, A31 plus A32, capital A32 plus A33, capital A33, which in this case I've got 0 times A31 plus 0 times A32 plus 10 times A33. That's awfully nice. So then what does that mean? Well, that means I don't have to worry about either of these two. I just have to worry about this. So 10 times the cofactor at 3, 3 is going to be 10 times negative 1 times 3 plus 3 plus the minor at 3, 3. Let's take a look at what the minor at 3, 3 looks like. So if I've got 1, 2, 4, 0, 2, 4, 0, 0, 10. The minor at 3, 3 says get rid of the third row and the third column. So I'm going to take the determinant of 1, 2, 0, 2. So that's 1 times 2 minus 2 times 0, which is going to be 2 minus 0, which is 2. So the whole determinant is going to be 10 times negative 1 to the 6th times 2, which is 10 times 1 times 2, which is 20. And that was really nice and easy. So what is, what is the shortcut? The shortcut is that you are allowed to combine rows or columns to simplify the, al the al not the algebra, but the arithmetic you have to do, but also the algebra. So, woohoo. Um, in the next video, we're going to learn about a couple other things we can do with determinants. Specifically, we're going to be able to solve systems of equations, not just with the matrices, but with the determinants of those matrices. So go get something to eat, get something to drink, rest a little bit, and come back, and let's woohoo and math on.